In this video, we'll talk about Taylor series, define what they are, and discuss how they might be useful to us in trying to do calculus on certain functions. What we want to do in this section is expand the idea of power series slightly. We mentioned before that there are only certain functions we could find power series expansions for, and they had to fall into certain categories based on these tricks with 1 over 1 minus x stuff thrown in there. But I want to do this for any function. I want to take any function and see if it's possible to write it as a power series. We'll so work from the function itself and, and not require that it has this certain form or looks a certain way to be able to do this. If we want to do this, we're going to first look at this the other way around. We're going to assume that I already have this power series expansion for my function and see what the fact that I know what this function is can tell me about this power series. So if I start with a power series here where I assume my function f of x that I have and that I know equals this power series sum from 0 to infinity of a n x to the n, is there a way that I can determine what a 0 has to be? Well, if I write out the first couple terms here, f of x is a 0 plus a 1 x plus a 2 x squared plus a 3 x cubed and so on, what happens if I plug in 0? If I plug in 0, all of the terms with x's in them will all just go away, and every term beyond has more x's in it. So if I plug in 0, we'll get that f of 0 is just a 0. That means just from this idea, I can use the function that I know this converges to to tell me what a 0 should be. What about if I wanted to go beyond a 0? Well, if I look again at the first couple terms, how can I get at a 1? Well, a1 has an x in front of it, but if I take a derivative, that x goes down to an x to the 0, which is a constant term, and then we can see what happens there. But differentiate this function, f prime of x will start with a1 plus 2a2x, 3a3x squared, and so on. And if I plug in 0 to this function, I'll get a1. So a1 is f prime at 0. And we can continue this process. If I differentiate one more time, I'll then have a2 that I can solve for. f double prime will start with 2a2 plus 6a3x plus 12a4x squared, and so on. So if I plug in 0 to this one, I can then solve for a2. So a2 should be f double prime at 0 divided by 2, because I have this extra 2 from in front. And if you keep going, you can see this pattern is going to continue. I can take more derivatives, and that will get me the higher terms in this series. The point you end up with is this on the body of here, this is a 2, but it's really a 2 factorial because it's 2 times 1. The 2 came down when I differentiated the squared, the 1 differentiated the x, and that gave me my answer. If I continue with this process, I will see that I get that a k, the kth term in this series, should be the kth derivative at 0 divided by k factorial. Right. If I go one more step, I will get that a3 should be f triple prime at 0 over 6, because this 6 here will be the factor to divide by, and 6 is 3 factorial. So that's the key idea here, that if I know that my series converges to f, then I can find the coefficients a, k in terms of the function f itself. And this gives us our idea of a Taylor series. So we define a Taylor series centered at C to be the following. It's T of X, which is the power series centered at C. So we have X minus C to the N here. And then our coefficients here are exactly the things we had before. The coefficients are the nth derivative at the center point divided by N factorial, which matches up with the AK we found in the last example. So we haven't necessarily said that this converges to our function yet. We've said that we can then define this series based on the function. And should it converge, it will converge to the function based on what we had before. In addition to Taylor series, we have what are called Maclaurin series. And these are just series where the center C is 0. With the series of the form m of x is the sum from 0 to infinity, nth derivative at 0 over n factorial times x to the n. So that's the definition of what these things are. Why are they so important? Well, the important thing here is that we already know that for power series, we can integrate and differentiate term by term as long as they converge. Now, the Taylor series is a power series. Well, I can integrate and differentiate it term by term. 
This becomes useful when trying to do numerical approximations because as we'll get on in this section, if the series converges, I can then cut it off somewhere and use a polynomial to do all this work instead of an actual function, which is much easier to handle when I'm trying to do calculations. And this becomes particularly useful for functions that we don't have ways to integrate. Things like integral of e to the x squared or integral of sine of one over x. We don't really have formulas for these, but if I can approximate it by a Taylor series and then integrate that polynomial, I can get close enough to any definite integral I want for these functions. However, all of these things require that the Taylor series converges and that it converges to the function that I started with when doing this process. And this is not a trivial fact, something you have to work with and figure out, and that's what we'll deal with more in this section, is when do these converge, how do we know they converge, and when do we know they converge to our actual function so that we can use them for these sorts of properties. So that is what a Taylor series is, that's how you define it, how you could generate one, and why they might be useful going forward.